Hello and welcome to FPL Mates, your best made for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and today we're doing something a little bit different because we are going to look ahead at game week 34 and have a look at who the best double game week players to buy right now are. Guys, whether you are free hitting in 34 and you want to get an idea, maybe you're planning a bench boost, whatever the case, I think you're going to find this one helpful. So if you do, make sure you drop a like, do subscribe if you're new around here. Let me show you what I got for you today. So as I say, we're doing something slightly different. So brand new graphics for this. And let me know if you do like this structure and format of a video. And maybe we'll do something similar in the future. And we're going to go through each team that doubles in game week 34. Look at their game week 33 and 34 fixture to see which kind of players we want to be bringing in right now. As well as looking at maybe some differentials that you might not be thinking about. So on each page, we have selected the top picks from each team. And we're going to go through all of them. Uh, we're going to have a look at the XG per 90 for the team the ex expected goals conceded per 90 per team as well. As you can see, Arsenal with decent expected goals per game. But what is super impressive is they only are expected to concede 0.5 goals per game, which means they're going to keep a hell of a lot of clean sheets. These numbers are actually unreal. And then we're going to separate all of these players into different categories. You can see on the screen right now, we've got your must buys, your great picks and your solid picks there as well. And we've divided them uh, th just like that, kind of in a bit of a tier list, I guess. And uh, we've got the Price. We've got the XG, the XA, the shots, the key passes, and the bonus points system points. Um, this one you might not be so familiar with, but this metric basically kind of defines how likely a player is to get bonus points in a game. How many bonus points points do they pick up during a game that count towards getting those three, two, or one bonus point at the end of the game. And generally speaking, we want to see a player above 20. If a player has over 20 on the BPS, that means they are very likely to be getting bonus points in each given game. So, Let's go through Arsenal first of all. A big team. We're going to do them alphabetically, starting off with Saka. I think he is the must-buy of this uh, of this Arsenal team. There's two must-buys I've got here, Saka and Gabriel. I think these two players, there's really no reason to not go for these players. Both very much nailed on. Saka with the penalties. Gabriel at that nice cheap price tag of 5.4, getting you those clean sheets. But also, you can see Gabriel's attacking numbers are pretty decent as well. 0.2 XG per game. That is what we expect to see from maybe some midfielders. So to have that from a defender is very, very nice indeed, which makes him the standout defender to get. But I know most of you guys have probably already got Saka and Gabriel in your team already. Maybe you've already got your third Arsenal player, or maybe you're thinking about picking up the third Arsenal player right now. Well, Raya is probably the best one to go for, given that he is just 5.1 million, a nice cheap price tag there. But if you can afford to go for Ben White, his bonus point system points are significantly higher, and he will get the occasional attack return. Now his attacking numbers aren't as good as Gabriel, but what we like about Ben White is that he's always likely to get bonus points if Arsenal are keeping clean sheets, which is very nice. Outside of that, Havertz and Erdegaard are probably the other attacking assets to go for. Havertz has been in phenomenal form recently. He really, really has. I'm not sure if he's as nailed as Saka in a double game week, but given his form, you definitely have to put your money on him starting both games. But in general, what we see from this is I prefer to put two Arsenal defensive players in a team. So Saka and two defenders I think works really well. You could also do Havertz and two defenders potentially there as well. Of course, I count Raya as a goalkeeper, uh, as a goalkeeper, as a defender as well. And I have actually got Saliba there as a solid pick. If you've already got him, he's definitely a player I would hold on to. But I think there is better value in both Raya, White, and obviously Gabriel there as well. I think Saliba currently probably the fourth best Arsenal defensive asset to go for at the moment. Outside of that, Zinchenko, Kivior wouldn't be touching those players rotation risk. Urian Timber might be on the cards very soon as well. Don't think it will quite happen by game week 34, but hey, you never know. But we've got plenty of options for Arsenal, all looking really, really good. So get that triple up on Arsenal, ready to go for game week 34. Now, Bournemouth play a Manchester United this game week and then have a double of Aston Villa and Wolves. That's pretty decent. And what we see from Bournemouth is their expected goals and their expected goals against are kind of average. I guess the expected goals conceded is not too bad at 1.4 expected goals conceded per game. It's nowhere near Arsenal, but nobody is, honestly. And we can see that the top pick for Bournemouth is going to be Solanke. And I think it makes a lot of sense to go for him as your double game week forward as well. First, one of the first names on your team sheet, really. 
really. We're looking at 0.44 XG per game, as well as 0.07 XA per game. That is pretty decent attacking numbers there. And he's also a penalty taker, which is nice in double game weeks because you have double the chance of getting those penalties. Outside of that, Neto and Zabani, definitely solid picks to go for potentially there as well. If you've already got Neto and Zabani, you probably look to keep them. I don't think they're necessarily the best of the best picks, but they're okay. They'll be fine to kind of fill up your squad, maybe on your bench for a bench boost, or maybe, you know, if you have to prioritize making transfers elsewhere and you just have these players laying around, hey, you may as well use them in a double game week. And as for Sanessi and Semenyo, I think they're kind of wait and see players. Sanessi hasn't quite started uh, yet really uh, properly for Bournemouth. If he hasn't had a consistent run of games, he will start to get back into this Bournemouth team very, very soon. And if he is available by game week 34, we'll wait until then and then maybe you go for Sanessi. I would actually say if you haven't got a Bournemouth defender and you're looking to pick one up, maybe wait until after game week 33 and potentially look at Sanessi as your game week 34 uh, defender from Bournemouth because he's slightly cheaper and typically throughout the season, we've seen better attacking numbers from him as well. Semenyo, not really feeling him. His attacking numbers aren't great. He's a little bit rotation risk. He's a little bit minutes risk and you won't be able to maximize the amount of minutes you are getting out of that double game week with Semenyo. Now, Crystal Palace face Liverpool away from home in game week 33. So in general, probably most of their players are going to be wait and see. You probably don't want to pick them up in game week 33, but we definitely can still have a look at some of these players. Their XG per game is not very good as a team, but their expected goals conceded is actually reasonably good at 1.1 expected goals conceded per uh, per performance per game, which is, yeah, like I say, pretty nice. It's not too bad at all. That's kind of really good numbers, really. But the problem is, um, both the teams they face in game week 34, although you would definitely say West Ham and Newcastle are both, you would say, weak defensive. You can, you can definitely score goals against West Ham and Newcastle. They're also two teams that do typically score. So despite Crystal Palace's good defensive numbers, the next three fixtures, including the 33 fixture and the Dublin 34, it's not too great, really, if we're looking for clean sheets because those just are not the fixtures we look to target when we are looking for those clean sheets. So we will probably look mostly at the attacking players. Eberechi Eza has not been in the most amazing form recently, but he's a player who's consistently posted good numbers, is a set piece taker, which is always very uh, helpful, and typically has been the best attacker in this Crystal Palace team whenever he's been fit. And he has recently returned to fitness and has had some good game time so he should be pretty nailed on from here on as long as he isn't dropped for performance related reasons I'm not sure that's going to quite happen he is a phenomenal football player of course Mateta at 4.9 million is a really nice cheap forward to go for as well he's uh, actually picking up a decent amount of xg over the past six game weeks so he's not too bad there and outside of that a couple of wait and see players uh, Henderson and Munoz just because they're defensive players you don't want to pick them up against Liverpool away Liverpool are a super strong attack and this is a super tough fixture for your defensive assets. So wait and see on game week 33 for Henderson and Munoz. And Elise is also going to be a wait and see as we await to see, I guess, how much how much game time he's likely to get in game week 34. He did obviously come off the bench in game week 32. Got a few minutes under his belt. But we want to see a few more minutes under his belt. Let's see if he gets a start against Liverpool before we kind of maybe try and predict whether he's going to be able to play both games in game week 34. I do think there's a good chance. And definitely, if Elise can play in game week 34 both fixtures starting both fixtures I think he could be almost just as good as Eza potentially uh, Elise could even take penalties off Eza as well so well, that remains to be seen but th both of those uh, Crystal Palace midfielders are going to be really really nice differentials really high scoring players in game week 34 and Eza in particular would be one of the first names on the team sheet if I was free hitting in game week 34 but definitely nowhere near a must buy for game week 33 given that fixture Everton face Chelsea away this game week and then have a double of Nottingham Forest at home and Liverpool at home. So two home fixtures. That Nottingham Forest fixture does look very nice and definitely an opportunity for a clean sheet there. Liverpool, however, not such a great fixture there, to be fair. So uh, Everton, not great on the attacking numbers. Uh, their defensive numbers are not particularly good either. We know Everton are not one of the stronger teams of the Premier League at the moment, but they do have some nice cheap assets that you could potentially go for. Now, Pickford and Branthwaite, I think, are solid. Pickford 
Brentford getting those save points. And if he does keep a clean sheet, likely to be on the bonus points as well. Branthwaite, just great value for money and a nice pickup if you're just looking for that cheap guy. Uh, Mikalenko, I think, is an interesting wait and see. A little bit more expensive than Branthwaite, however. But I think he is an interesting pick at the very least. Two bonus points in game week 32 for Mikalenko. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin, actually his form of since his return to the Everton team hasn't been too bad. Another penalty taker, which is always useful in those double game weeks. And maybe, just maybe, he could be an interesting differential. But you would have to be very, very brave indeed to pick a player like Calvert-Lewin in your FPL team for game week 34. But I have to look at these fixtures. Chelsea, Forest, Liverpool, there are potentially goals in those games if Calvert-Lewin can get on the end of them. But let's move on. Now, here's the big one. Liverpool with so many FPL options to choose from. There really, really is. Let's start off by having a look at their fixtures. Crystal Palace at home, really nice fixture, probably mostly from a defensive point of view, because as we mentioned, Crystal Palace actually not too bad defensively. So I wouldn't expect Liverpool to score too many goals, but then again, they are Liverpool. They have amazing attacking numbers. Fulham away and Everton away are the double game week 34 fixtures. And although they're two, are, you know, okay away fixtures, they're not the best of the best fixtures. Fixtures. And you certainly prefer Crystal Palace's fixtures for your attacking players. But I look at these three, game, uh, three games over the next two game weeks, and I think clean sheets are surely there. Surely there's got to be some clean sheets in there for Liverpool. Finally, we've got to see them soon, haven't we? Uh, XG per 90 for Liverpool is a record 2.52. Well, I say record. I mean the best in the Premier League. And their 1.1 XGC per 90 is actually pretty decent as well. That's probably around third, uh, maybe joint third, I believe it is, for Liverpool. So a strong defence there, the strongest of attacks. We probably want to prioritise two attacking players and one defender. So attacking players, who are we looking at? Salah, must buy, absolutely. Got to have him in your team. Probably going to be a captain for game week 34 as well. Potentially even a captain for game week 33 if you want to go that way. Penalties, always useful as we saw in game week 32 just now. He's taking an insane amount of shots at the moment. It really is unreal. Now, fair enough, he's not finishing all of them, but you have to be in it to win it and you have to be in those right areas, taking those shots on. That's half the battle in, uh, in terms of getting those goals a lot of the time. His numbers, really, really good, but maybe his performances haven't quite been in there but by the time we get to game week 34 he seems he sees himself you know getting more game time getting more prepared being more up to the task then maybe we might see Salah back to his old self by the time we get to game week 34 you'd certainly like to bet on it now the second pick for me is probably Luis Diaz at this moment his form has been amazing recently it really really has been phenomenal he's been doing excellently and at 7.6 million that's a nice price tag as well now the only problem with Luis Diaz is that maybe we could see some rotation there by game week 34 but honestly the form he's been at the moment the fact that Liverpool have to win every single game and now depend on Arsenal dropping points as well to win the Premier League well they are going to need their strongest 11 out and that does contain Luis Diaz so Luis Diaz for me is the second best Liverpool pick at this moment Darwin Nunez probably coming in third there I know a lot of people have a lot to say about Darwin, but actually, over the last few game weeks, he hasn't been doing too bad, really. Decent numbers. He is getting the odd attacking contribution as well, which is always very useful. Uh, it's just a case of whether he's going to finish his chances or not. Van Dijk is probably the defensive player to pick at this current moment for Liverpool because the rest of the defence, we're not really sure who is actually going to be playing by the time we get to game week 34. But what we can say about Van Dijk is he's nailed on for both this game week and next game week with both fixtures, which is going to be useful. Actually, not too bad attacking numbers here either. I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. 0.05 XG, 0.02 XA. It's okay for a defender, and you never know when Van Dijk is going to pop up with a header uh, from one of those set pieces. McAllister is definitely a solid pick as well. Wouldn't make my top three or four Liverpool picks for game week 34, but if you are looking for a slightly cheaper option, uh, McAllister is definitely that guy at 5.9 million. Really nice price tag. Uh, free kick taker, as we know. His attacking numbers numbers are good you know, putting up those decent numbers. And his bonus point numbers are really good at the moment. So if, if McAllister gets an attacking return, he's pretty much nailed on for bonus points as well. And we've got loads of players in the wait and see category for Liverpool. And now the problem is, we've got the goalkeeper situation, Alisson and Kelleher. Is Alisson going to be back in the Liverpool starting 11 by the time game week 34 arrives? We're still not sure. And we could even get a chaotic moment where both Alisson and Kelleher play maybe one game each in game week 34. That's definitely a possibility 
possibility as we're still not sure when he is going to return to the starting 11 for Liverpool. So both Alisson and Kelleher, if you don't have these players already, are wait and see players. If you already have one of them, you probably hold on to them until we get more information. But they're, they're definitely not transfers I'd like to be making this game week. It's too, too chaotic. We don't know what's going to go on. Same thing with the defenders. Is Trent going to be back for game week 34? We're still not sure about that. If he is, he could be a decent pick. You know, we know what Trent does. But even if Trent can just about find himself back into the Liverpool team by game week 34, is he going to see a little bit of rotation with Bradley? Is he going to see a bit of rotation with Gomez? You could say similar with Robertson. Is he going to get rotated with Gomez, Gomez or maybe Simicas as well? There is a lot of question marks around some of those other Liverpool defenders right now. So for game week 33, I would look to avoid them. Wait and see. Reassessing game week 34 and see where we can go for, for from them, I guess. Uh, but yeah, for now, Salah, get him in. Luis Diaz, Darwin. If you can get at least one of those players, I think you're going to be in a great position. And the ideal defender at this moment is Van Dijk. However, I can see that potentially changing by game week 34. Wait and see. Okay, so I don't want to entirely write off Sheffield United. I know probably we're not going to be picking from this team. They play uh, Brentford in game week 33. That's a decent fixture. And in game week 34, in fairness, Burnley and Manchester United, they're not too bad fixtures either. So if I wanted to go super differential, could I potentially take a punt on Brereton Diaz? Potentially. Uh, 5 million as a really nice price tag. He's been putting up some good numbers whenever he's been in the Sheffield United team. He has returned from injury over the past few weeks and he's been doing okay since then. Obviously, did a phenomenal job on Fulham uh, in game week 31. So, definitely a player we at least need to keep an eye on. Um, but, are you going to risk it and go for a Sheffield United player in your team for game week 34? The answer is probably not. But, I mean, if you really want to go differential, I think this is a place I'd be very tempted to go, particularly considering those fixtures for attackers are really nice fixtures. Hamer, of course, is the top scoring player for Sheffield United as well uh, in terms of FPL points. So maybe you could consider him as well. But Brereton Diaz is where I would think I would put my money if I absolutely had to choose a Sheffield United player. It's risky, but I like the differential. And the final team that doubles in game week 34 is Wolverhampton Wanderers. And there are a few options from this team. And I do think they've got some okay potential here. Now, game week 33 is nice. Game week 33, they face Nottingham Forest. We know that's a good fixture, particularly for your attacking players, but even potentially some defenders as well. Game week 34 is a little bit more mixed. Arsenal at home, at least it's a home fixture, I guess. Bournemouth at home, it's a home fixture, I guess. But yeah, I don't think game week 34 is amazing for Wolves. But when you combine 33 with 34, those two game weeks together, and the fact that they play two home fixtures in game week 34, the fact that Wolves are pushing for Europe at the moment there could be some potential here I wouldn't want to go in too hard on Wolves for game week 33 and 34 but I think maybe picking up one or two players could be pretty decent so Sarabia has been the star man recently to be fair hasn't he but uh, with penalties maybe going to the likes of Cunha and He Chan when they return I'm not 100% convinced by him despite that nice cheap price tag uh, we could see his minutes reduced as well uh, as we see more Wolves attackers uh, re-enter the starting 11 but Sarabia should be fair nailed on not necessarily for 90 minutes every game but he should get pretty decent minutes nice price tag and potentially on penalties Cunha could be on the penalty guy we know that Cunha has done so well this season like whenever he's been playing he's been really good now he's had two substitute appearances in the last two game weeks um, but we could see game week 33 he finally gets his first start and if he does he is going to be the main attacker really for Wolves you would have you would imagine then going into game week 34 you would hope by that point Cunha is ready to play two games games there, uh, ready to go, ready to get you some FPL points. So I do like Cunha. do like Cunha as a pick. Nice price tag of 5.5. Jose Sal, I think, is an okay goalkeeper to go for. I mean, you'd be looking for save points, really, against Arsenal and Bournemouth. Maybe getting some uh, some uh, clean sheet points, maybe against Forest. You could get a clean sheet against Bournemouth as well, technically, but Wolves' defensive numbers are not particularly good. I mean, they're okay, but they're nothing special. They're kind of mid-tables, lower mid-table kind of defence uh, in terms of their numbers. I Nori has been a sensational FPL pick recently, but he has picked up a potential uh, injury. Uh, we're not sure if he's even going to be available for game week 33 or not, so definitely a wait and see. But if Aitnori is available for game week 33 and game week 34, he would be one of the first players, again, on my team sheet for game week 34. Really, really nice pick. And mostly that's because he's been playing as an attacker. When He Chan returns to Wolves, I don't know if Aitnori will still be playing in that left wing position or not. Um, but if He Chan 
Zlatan is kind of having limited minutes, then Aitnori is definitely going to see some minutes in the attacking areas. And whenever we see like an attacker getting subbed off, so Sarabia, Cunha, Hicham, if they were to get subbed off at 60, 70 minutes in a game, Aitnori would take that advanced position playing slightly further up the field. Um, but yeah, he is a defender most of the time, a defender who does still play advanced, even when he is playing defensively. By the time we get to game week 34, I don't think we're still going to have the uh, attacker forward Aitnori anymore, which is going to be uh, a little bit less appealing, but there still is a lot of appeal there. He's definitely a very, very creative attacking player, even when he is playing in that left wing back kind of position. So if he's fit, definitely a player we need to look at, but we have to wait and see. He Cham, similar situation. If you already have him, you maybe keep him. Same with like Nori, but uh, He Cham, uh, I'm just not convinced he's going to get the minutes by the time he gets to game week 34. Didn't even make the bench in game week 32. And even though he has been progressing well, I'm just not yet convinced he is going to be the minutes man we hope for. And looking at Arsenal and Bournemouth, I don't know if they're good enough fixtures to take a risk on a player like He Chan. So there you go. Those are the Wolves players. Let's do one more thing before we wrap up the video. So I very quickly rustled up this, uh, I guess, free hit team, bench boost team, ideal, perfect team for game week 34, based on current information, I suppose, with a couple of risks in there, a couple of risky picks, a lot of safe picks in there, and some of those medium picks as well. Now, what I would say immediately is that actually this team doesn't look great for a bench boost, and that's what I've kind of been trying to, uh, I wouldn't recommend, I've not been recommending the bench boost in 34, because there's not enough strong players playing this game week, there's not enough strong teams. Your bench is going to be the likes are probably Neto, Mikalenko, Ait Nori, and then one of Elise, Mateta, and Cunha. So it's not great uh, for a bench boost, but it's okay. At least you have double game weeks there, and there's definitely some potential. So a bench boost in game week 34 could work, but... I'm not 100% convinced by it personally, but you guys might tell me something slightly different. So for this team, I've gone for, like I said, double Arsenal defence uh, and then double Liverpool attack and then picking one from each team from the reverse of those uh, kind of uh, positions. We've got Eze in there, Solanke, Cunha, some nice decent picks there. So these are probably the players I would go for if I was to, if I had to lock in a free hit for Game Week 34 right now. Uh, but uh, of course, we still have a little bit of time to think about that. Just wanted to give you this as a rough example of what a, a full double Game Week team might look like for Game Week 34. It would look something like this. Of course, there's op other options. You know, Havertz could come in for one of your Arsenal players. You could get Darwin in here as well. All of these players are all great options. And to be fair, I think there's actually a lot of different directions you can go for game week 34 with none being particularly better than the other i think there's many many great options so uh yeah don't feel too much pressure to go for something exactly like this this is just kind of a rough team of what a perfect team might look like there's actually in reality a lot of other options you could go for here that are just because just as good uh, like i say but we are going to wrap this video up there. If you did enjoy this one, uh, please do drop a like. Let me know if you enjoyed this format and maybe we can consider doing it again, maybe for game week 37 and the double game week there. Uh, we've got double game week in 35. So again, we could maybe do this again then. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you want more FBL content. We'll be back tomorrow with the regular content. We'll do the tier list and we might do a stream in the evening as well. But until then, guys, thank you so much for watching the first video of this game week and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.